Hello and welcome to my channel when the stars aligned. My name is Kelly and this video is for all of you generators and it is for manifesting generators too. Um, I know there's a whole culture for manifesting generators but manifesting generators are generators at a baseline. Three things you should do after you find out you're a generator. And for you MGs, I am going to add in a bonus MG component at the end, just to satisfy that, that extra, um, extra MG-ness you got going on. So, so my first tip, once you find out you're a generator, is develop a solid daily movement practice um, or embodiment practice. Movement practice could be, you know, you're going to do fitness every day, whether that's walking or yoga or running or dancing. But the intention here is really around a level of mindfulness. If you just go and throw yourself on the treadmill and you're thinking about all your problems throughout the day or um, shaming your body and wanting to look different, it's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking, that's why I say embodiment, because to me, embodiment is being in your body with like awareness of being in your body. So doing some kind of physical movement with awareness. So run and like really focus on your breath. So, okay, for this run, I'm going to really pay attention to my breathing. And anytime I slip away, which naturally will happen, I'm going to come back. Maybe I'll like tap my wrist or I'll rub my cheek or something to bring me back to the moment. Or dancing. Dance and move to a song and just notice, oh, how does my body want to move? It's just about bringing more awareness into the act of being physical in your body, which literally you can do with any kind of movement practice. Second thing to do, start practicing your yes and your no. So much of being empowered as a generator is really having uh, autonomy over your yes and your no. You have a certain uh, power of energy that you bring to the table, but it's only really going to feel good for you when you're bringing it to the things that feel aligned for you, that feel correct, that it's like, yeah, that's where I want to plug in. It's like you have this power cord and you're looking for the outlet that's like, that's what I want to be tapped into. But you also don't want to go plugging into things that that aren't right for you, that don't feel good, that drain you, that uh, take more energy than they give back. So practice your yes and no, whether it's, you know, an assignment at work or uh, a song that comes on the radio or, you know, you can even test yourself. Like I, when I was first learning about human design, I um, went to the grocery store and I loved just walking around the grocery store, which honestly I love doing anyway. I don't know why. I love grocery stores. I love farmer's markets. Um, maybe it's my Taurus self note, all that earthy, sensual food. Uh, but walk around the grocery store. I'm a weirdo. I'll like have my hands on my belly or like a hand on my heart and I'll be like, I'll be like sighing in the grocery store. But notice, what are you drawn to? When you look at the cucumbers, is your body not from the mind, but your body is like, ooh, that's exciting. Or what aisle are you, you know, magnetized towards? Practice the yes and the no. And what things are like, mm, no, my body is saying no. Um, and of course, this is going to take time to develop. It will start to reveal when you're kind of putting it into practice. Um, and I do find that when we are getting more familiar with our yes and no, that builds us to be able to discern uh, bigger things in our life. Like, who do we choose to form relationships with? Uh, where do we choose to live? What are we um, subscribing to with uh, you know, the precious energy we're giving to the information we're reading and the accounts that we're looking at? Like These things really matter. So practicing your yes and no is also really powerful once you learn that you're a generator. Which brings me to the third one, which is kind of piggybacking off of the second, but I think it's not spoken of enough for being a generator. And this is boundaries. Yes, as a generator, you have access and you are designed to have access to this abundant, zesty, sexy life force energy. But how many of you have felt like incredibly detached from that at times? I know I have. And uh, I've done some investigating on that. And what I continually find is when my energy gets sapped, I just feel like <sighs> lethargic. Sometimes, yes, it's a vital chapter. It's um. In my somatic work, it's what I call, and many people call, a down. It's when you're in more of a down cycle and you need to be in the, the muck and the transmutation and some of the darkness, and that's, that's vital. We're not always supposed to be up, nor are generators always supposed to be up. But if that's consistent and it's really challenging to feel 
excitement or sexiness or creativity. My indicator that I've kind of weaned from this with myself and working with many clients is that the boundaries have not been prioritized uh, because we are not really taught a lot about boundaries growing up. A lot of us, I, don't, I know where I was raised and with many other friends I had growing up, it was kind of normal to have your boundaries crossed. It's like, well, that's what we do and that's what you need to do and that's what you should do. You have to do that. Oh, you're at a family party and you have to go hug that person. It's like the, the sense of having personal boundaries of when, when we do and don't want to share our energy are actually not something many of us are taught. I'm a big advocate for embodied boundaries. Sometimes you will need to use your voice though, if maybe someone's not as um, attuned to like subtlety and energetics. Um, I think we can be embodied in our boundaries by how we hold ourselves, and by saying yes and no in authentic response. So if you're saying yes all the time when inside you're no, that's you crossing your own boundaries. When you start saying no when it's a no and yes when it's a yes, even if it ruffles other people's feathers, that's when you start respecting yourself and the people in your life will rise to meet that or they might just kind of fall out the wayside or the dynamics will have to change, which ultimately is for the best for everybody. When we start implementing boundaries as generators, that's when we notice our life force coming back online. So if you're feeling really sapped, where are you giving more than you actually want to be giving right now? What kind of things like exhaust you and you even start thinking about them? Where do you need to like tighten things up a little bit and speak for yourself and advocate for yourself? So those are the three tips that I recommend you integrate and embody once you have discovered that you're a generator. And now I want to give a little bonus one for manifesting generators because I know y'all are special. Um, <laughs> manifesting generators. Once you find out you're a manifesting generator, mm, okay, find what makes you too much and commit to really going into it. I find that MGs have this beautiful role to play in the interpersonal dynamics of humanity of like, yeah, you bring the zest because you're a generator, but you kind of bring the zest and then some. And I feel, I saw this quote sometimes, I saw it somewhere and I really liked it. Um, you're not, you're not too much, you're the mostest or something like that. You're the most. And I loved that. So my tip, which can feel kind of uh, scary for MGs if, you know, been conditioned to hide that passion and that power and that zesty, fiery spark you have. Find that thing that makes you too much, perhaps the thing that people have told you is too much, and go into it. Anecdote on that though, go into it without seeking the validation from the world around you. Because I have seen that MGs might sometimes still be like, compensating for their fear of being too much by kind of wanting others to validate them but the brilliance opens up for you when you go into that muchness and you're like I'm freaking doing this because it's me and it's okay if you don't get it no shame no shade but I'm gonna keep doing it and I find that when MGs embrace that and they embrace that too much thing you know it's, it could be I'm thinking of MGs that I've worked with or that I know personally I know one MG who's like super spicy in her embodiment and her expression. I'm just like, go babe, do it. <laughs> um, or, you know, maybe it's like it comes through in the voice or the passions that you have or the way that you move through the world or uh, how you dress. Like, what is your too much thing? Give yourself permission for like, even if it's a day, to be like, you know what? This is my too, this is my mostest day. I'm going to practice just being embodied in my mostestness. So those are my tips for what to do once you found out that you are a generator in human design. I would love to hear your reflections and comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. It helps out my channel more than you can imagine. And uh, thanks for being here and I'll catch you on the next video.